I've been taught as far back as I can remember that with life itself, the gift of life that we receive, we are given responsibilities. It's about caring and loving all of life. And so with life comes a responsibility to recognize that that's what we're here for. The lands and territory where I come from is Ontario, and it was really upsetting how much damage that lifeline is. The water, when I saw it there, when I went to put the tobacco and talk to her, I have no word about what, what to call it, it that state, the, the substance of what that water would be. That's what drives me. We're helping to plan this gathering with Ontario Nature, folks at Trent, um, Planet Canada and others, trying to bring people together and, and utilize stuff that's been, others have been doing well and, and even learning from, from, I guess, the challenges that they've had. I think cross-cultural dialogue is absolutely critical in terms of uh, rediscovering the origin story of Canada. The, the uh, Peace and Friendship Treaties were the original multilateral environmental agreements. It was about living in peace and friendship with one another and living peacefully and respectfully on the land. I think there's a, a lot of hope lies in what we're seeing with Indigenous-led conservation that's really had a resurgence in recent years. And we need to have not a consumer-based solution to this problem, but a culture-based solution. And I think those culture-based solutions come from having these conversations across cultures to look for what are the best elements of our cultures and, and combine them together and move forward with that. I think that, you know, through ceremony, we have, we have ceremony keepers, knowledge keepers across this land, that relationship we haven't lost. And rather than, you know, the, the new system um, f feeling like they have the upper hand, they need us again. Just like when they came here and they got sick. They needed us then, they need us now. I think one of the most important things to know is that long-term observation of uh, things that happen in nature, that's science. And the manifestation of that is that, okay, all of these things work to our benefit. Uh, we should honor them, protect them, and uh, thank them. Uh, and in so doing, establish a greater awareness uh, about our own position within nature. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, that indigenous knowledge is, is perhaps something that, that backs up what Western science is saying. They're complementary ways of knowing, that it's not that one is, is right and the other one's supplemental or something like that. They're, they're both running in parallel with each other. I feel like the answer is working together and actually recognizing um, what each community actually has to bring to the table and the voices that they have and the knowledge that they have to share. I think that's what the most important kind of factor in this entire experience is. I see it in our youth and the drive and the, and the passion and the yearning for being involved. In discussions we just had with the panel, I really hope that it does reach um, a wider audience. I know that it is sort of Ontario focused right now, but hopefully it can create a network that spreads across all of Canada. I want to see more First Nation Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee. I want to see all of the more youth working in the environment. Like the land is everything. So personally, having been in sort of a similar thing with the Youth Council, I've been able to see firsthand what a group of youth can do. and sort of the relationships and connections we've been able to build simply over a passion for the environment and I think about like how much more we can get done and all the new ideas that can come forward if we can join together as equals. I want to see more youth like that want to be involved in it, that want to care for it and that it's important to them. 
Um, so that, to me, is where the real hope lies, is with the younger people and, and knowing and feeling that they're ready to take on challenges and, and, and lead. The economy is a medium through which humanity meets its needs from the environment. We need these intact ecosystems to be anchors for biodiversity and for um, ecological integrity. It's well known now that Indigenous peoples are experiencing the impacts of climate change the most. Uh, people who are out on the land see the changes that are happening, they're affected by them. But we are not just passive victims of climate change, we are also active innovators in creating uh, solutions to climate action. And so what I think we can do is we can share those stories of innovation. We know more than we think we know because the teachings we have and the connections and the relationships we have with the landscape is here. It's not gonna, I can't just pick it up and throw it somewhere else. And that's kind of the way I approach things, you know, and I approach collaboration. Like I think about just being separate, but we work together somewhere here in the middle. Our people are already protecting areas, but we don't put up a big billboard saying this is protected or we don't have a piece of paper saying, you know, there's some bylaw or a law that says this is protected. We're just doing it and, and we're, we're waiting for outsiders to recognize that we're protecting these areas already. Um, and, and the path is not trying to conform or fit into that. We're already doing a good approach and we need supports that enable to con for us to continue doing that. You look on a, a satellite image of all the Greens in Southern Ontario are, are First Nation communities. Um, and so there's proof right there, you know. We don't have that piece of paper saying we're gonna do something like that, you know, but we're just doing it. And we need the federal government, the provincial governments, institutions, NGOs, whoever, just to recognize that and, and find ways to help us support because those, those patches of green are stressed and our people are stressed because of loss of language, because of loss of culture, connections to those things. We have invasive species affecting us. We have climate change changing things and changing the patterns that, that we've been used to for, for so long. But our people have been adaptable and we're gonna to continue to adapt. And, and um, we just need allies that are willing to help. Let us do our thing and the approach and, and, and have faith in that and, and not necessarily push us to put it down on paper, you know? And, and, um, because that's not been our way. Protected areas have a long colonial history and that's been one of the big challenges for Indigenous communities to be receptive at all to even thinking about that as an approach for conservation. So what is happening now is actually addressing that governance question which is who actually manages, who actually makes the decisions around what happens in those areas and instead of having areas that are fenced off for, for recreation for only certain people, these areas can be set aside to let be used for cultural endeavors, spiritual endeavors, and with Indigenous leadership at the forefront. Conservation's uh, absolutely necessary. Isn't that what our traditional cultures were? The Indigenous way isn't just to take the human being out of the equation so that you can just conserve all the other plants and animals. It's how do you actually build in a comprehensive uh, conservation program. So you're conserving the resources but you're also able to utilize and manage those resources at the same time. Let's understand where people are at right now. Let's come up with a plan to meet those needs and then do it. In my mind I've been applying a similar perspective to caring for like fisheries, to caring for wetlands, forestry, um, community engagement, land management, laws, whatever. Just approaching it in this way that's really holistic and connected to our community and culture. My whole world like I was like I want to control this and I want to understand this and I need numbers and I need to be able to develop models and analyze and this needs to matter statistically and now I'm just kind of like yeah those are tools and they're helpful but you know what's more helpful for like for climate action for change is for me to say the Ahanta Kaliwataku in the morning which is a Thanksgiving address. To sit there and acknowledge all of creation, that they are still fulfilling their roles and responsibilities every single day. And I have a specific relationship with every aspect of that, that kinship network. And that there's knowledge embedded in there. 
things are adapting and, and I think we have to take those cues from nature and, and, um, and actually ask nature ourselves, how do we adapt? What do we need to do? Reconnect that, that, that ability that our ancestors have to communicate with everything in nature. You know, our prophecies say we're going to bring that back. Well, we have to push and make that happen. We can't just say, well, somewhere down the future, our kids are going to make that connection. No, we got to we got to make that a reality for ourselves. I'm just really happy to see all the, this, the, these type of gatherings happening because I truly believe that this is the future of conservation and stewardship. We need to bring everyone together and value all types of knowledge as equal in building a really solid plan for the future, but together. We all have to come to the table and recognize that conservation of biodiversity needs to be at the forefront of our minds. Um, we don't have an economy without a healthy environment. We can't think about it the other way around. Being out there every day, it just, everything started to make sense. The things that I'd, I'd heard as a youth, but had never really thought about all, just started to make sense out there. And it just feels like that's where my heart is, is right there. And I need to be out there in order to be happy. And, and I need to contribute. I need to give back to the land. It has given us so much. And all I want to do is dedicate my life to doing what I can to help it. I would say that it's important to live your values. Uh, not just talk them, but to live them. To figure out what you can do to express a real commitment to sustainability. And I think that's important to stay intellectually honest and to stay honorable as a person committed to your own culture. I think science needs to learn from us, not the other way around. In general, even the other societies are making a change. They have the connection uh, and rite of passage between two, two learning systems. So if the other societies are beginning to think this way, that's a good thing. If we're going to exercise our responsibilities to the next seven generations, um, we have to do it with everybody who's sharing the land. The newcomers who have come here, lived on the land for several generations, begin to be informed and guided and become part of the land that they live upon. And in fact, in so doing, we create abundance. We co-create abundance. And then from there, then we, we conserve it. We think about seven generations hence. We also think seven generations back too and remember those fundamental laws were practiced by our ancestors. And we have a responsibility because of this privilege of life, because they took good care of, we're able to live a good life. And so we look back, we look forward, we know what we need to do today.